The Sultanate of Darfur was a pre-colonial Nile Valley state in present-day Sudan. It functioned independently from 1603 to October 24, 1874. Origins Darfur is composed mostly of semi-arid plains that cannot support a dense population. The one exception is the area in and around the Jebel Mara Mountains. It was from bases in these mountains that a series of groups expanded to control the region. The Daju and the 14th century migrants the Tunja were the earliest powers in Darfur according to written records. The transition of power from the Daju to the Tunja was facilitated through marriage. Eventually the Tunja began marrying amongst the fur people producing Sultan Dali, a celebrated figure in Darfur histories, who was on his mother's side of fur, and thus brought the dynasty closer to the people it ruled. Dali divided the country into provinces, and established a penal code, which, under the title of Qutb Dali or Dali's book, is still preserved, and differs in some respects from Quranic law. His grandson Suleiman reigned from 1603 to 1637, and was a great warrior and a devoted Muslim. Suleiman Solon is considered as the founder of the Kara dynasty and the Sultanate of Darfur. During the 17th century, the Kara sultans introduced the feudal Hakura system into Darfur. Islam and prosperity in Darfur, the Tunja introduced Islam to Darfur via their experience in the Muslim empires of Kanem and Owadde. Suleiman's grandson, Ahmed Bukr, made Islam the religion of the state, and increased the prosperity of the country by encouraging immigration from Banu and Bajemi. His rule extended east of the Nile as far as the banks of the Eightbara. Civil War, the death of Bukr initiated a long-running conflict over the succession. On his deathbed, Bukr stated that each of his many sons should rule in turn. Once on the throne, each of his sons instead hoped to make their own son heir, leading to an intermittent civil war that lasted until 1785 June. Due to these internal divisions, Darfur declined in importance and engaged in wars with Sena and Wade. Muhammad II Tirab, one of the most capable of the monarchs during this period, was Sultan Muhammad Tarab, one of Ahmad Bukr sons. He led a number of successful campaigns. In 1785 to 1786, he led an army against the FUNJ, but got no further than Omdurman. Here he was stopped by the Nile, and found no means of getting his army across the river. Unwilling to give up his project, Tarab remained at Omdurman for months and the army began to grow disaffected. According to some stories Tarab was poisoned by his wife at the instigation of disaffected chiefs, and the army returned to Darfur. While he tried to have his son succeed him, the throne instead went to his brother Abd al Rahman. Abd al Rahman the Just, Abd al Rahman established a new capital at El Fasher, meaning the capital, in 1790. The capital had formerly been moved from place to place then at another location called Cobb. During his reign, Abd al Rahman, surnamed El Rashid or the Just, Napoleon Bonaparte was campaigning in Egypt. In 1799 Abd Rahman wrote to congratulate the French general on his defeat of the Mamluks. Bonaparte replied by asking the Sultan to send him by the next caravan 2,000 black slaves upwards of 16 years old, strong and vigorous. Muhammad el Fadhl, Muhammad el Fadhl, his son, was for some time under the control of an energetic eunuch, Muhammad Kara, but he ultimately made himself independent and his reign lasted till 1838, when he died of leprosy. He devoted himself largely to the subjection of the semi-independent Arab tribes who lived in the country, notably the Rizigat, thousands of whom he slew. In 1821, he lost the province of Kordofan to the Egyptians under Mehemet Ali, who planned to conquer the Sudan. The Kara dispatched an army but it was routed by the Egyptians near Barra on August 19, 1821. The Egyptians had been intending to conquer the entirety Darfur, but their difficulties consolidating their hold on the Nile region forced them to abandon these plans. Al Fadl died in 1838, and of his 40 sons, the third, Muhammad Hassan, was appointed his successor. Hassan is described as a religious but avaricious man. In 1856, he went blind, and for the rest of his reign, his sister Zamzam, the Al Aribasi, was the de facto ruler of the Sultanate. The Turkiyya, in 1856, 
a Khartoum businessman, Al Zubair Rama, began operations in the land south of Darfur. He set up a network of trading posts defended by well armed forces and soon had a sprawling state under his rule. This area known as the Bar el Ghazal had long been the source of the goods that Darfur would trade to Egypt and North Africa, especially slaves and ivory. The natives of Bar el Ghazal paid tribute to Darfur, and these were the chief articles of merchandise sold by the Darfurians to the Egyptian traders along the road to Asyat. Al Zubair redirected this flow of goods to Khartoum and the Nile. Sultan Hassan died in 1873, and the succession passed to his youngest son Ibrahim who soon found himself engaged in a conflict with al-Zubair. After earlier conflicts with the Egyptians, al-Zubair had become their ally and in cooperation with them agreed to conquer Darfur. The war resulted in the destruction of the kingdom. Ibrahim was slain in battle in the autumn of 1874, and his uncle Hassab Allah, who sought to maintain the independence of his country, was captured in 1875 by the troops of the Khedive, and removed to Cairo with his family. Conquest. Darfur was reconquered and its last sultan, Ali Dinar, killed by the British in 1916, when Ali Dinar gave his support to the Ottoman Empire during the First World War. The Sultanate then passed to the Anglo-Egyptian condominium. References <laughs>